care less who went out first as long as they both got out and got back in safely because I needed both crewmen inside the spacecraft to, to accomplish my part of the mission. There you go. For those who haven't uh, read the plaque, uh, we'll read the plaque that's on the front landing gear of this lamb. We had a couple of things to do, and one was to uh, un unveil the plaque that was on the landing gear. Airmen from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon. We came in peace for all mankind. Uh, that, that statement really, to me, was a very symbolic one of not just our mission, but all of the Apollo effort. Columbia, this is Houston reading you and clear over. Nearly 60 miles above them, Michael Collins orbits the moon alone in the command module. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. Uh, I believe they're setting up the flag now. Great. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right, I don't mind a bit. Tell me if you got a picture, Houston. Well, we got a beautiful picture, Neil. The flag was kind of wrapped around the upper pole, and as it unfurled, there was a rod that would snap into position. Maybe to pull that end off a little bit. But it didn't do that, and it was sort of bunched in one end, so we had to uh, even it out. Straighten that end up. Okay. So you got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar Beautiful, just beautiful. If you look real close, you can see that I'm uh, saluting the flag. And for a military person, that was indeed a very, very proud moment to be on the moon saluting uh, the flag. Beautiful view. Is that something? I had never some flight out here. Except for some ventilation. Uh, Neil and Buzz. Uh, the President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you, over. That would be an honor. All right, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you think. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. Armstrong and Aldrin spend just over two hours exploring the surface of the moon. You've got your feet underneath you. They climb back inside, uh, closed the hatch, uh, repressurized the lunar module, and then took a nap. And that was uh, basically the, the spacewalk. It uh, was a technical tour de force. Went very nicely. The legacy of Apollo is when a group of people sees a challenge, human beings can, uh, can accept the challenge and chart a course and, and, and do just remarkable things given a task to do, one that seems impossible, given the desire to do it, humans can accomplish almost anything. NASA fulfills John Kennedy's dream to land men on the moon and bring them back alive. I want you to know that I think I'm the luckiest man in the world in welcoming you back to Earth. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin clocked just two and a half hours walking on the surface. Their successful mission paves the way for fellow astronauts to embark on more advanced lunar exploration. Trainers came to us one day and said, we're going to teach you what you need to know when you get to the moon. We said, Hey, we know. We're going to put up the flag. We're going to talk to the president. We're going to come home. They said, yeah, that's what you think. 
just four months after the first landing, Apollo 12 carries Pete Conrad, Richard Gordon, and Alan B. to the moon. 257 feet coming down the side. Unlike Apollo 11, Conrad and B make a pinpoint landing. Contact light outstanding, man. The area is called the Ocean of Storms, the site of an ancient volcano. They spend nearly eight hours collecting 75 pounds of moon rocks. Pete, you're 34 minutes into the EVA, and you're right, right on the map full timeline. We were tired. Uh, we were dirty. It went by pretty quick, but we did a lot of hard work. From an unmanned probe that landed two years earlier, they retrieve parts that contain a remarkable discovery. Bacteria from Earth seem to have survived in a vacuum of space. For the next moon mission, NASA geologists choose a more dangerous landing site, the heavily cratered lunar highlands. I've always thought that our crew, Apollo 12, could have flown any mission as good as anybody else, probably, except 13. The commander of Apollo 13 is Jim Lovell, a veteran of two Gemini missions and Apollo 8. He's NASA's most experienced astronaut. One of the things I wanted to do before I retired from active spaceflight was to land on the moon. That's the reason why I had got into NASA in the first place. That was the whole thing. So I was looking forward to 13. Jim Lovell's crew has been training together for almost a year, even before being assigned to Apollo 13. But the team is broken up just three days before launch. Jack Swigert is a last-minute replacement when the command module pilot is exposed to the measles. On every flight, we ended up getting pressed into the corner. There were a lot of last-minute details. Changes were still being made. Swigert joins the two lunar landers, Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes. Their destination, a difficult landing site in the moon's Framoro Hills. You know, you're sort of relaxed because there's only two things that are going to happen. Either it's going to go as planned or something is going to go wrong. This was my last chance to get to the moon. Ignition sequence has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have commit and we have liftoff at 2.13. Saturn V building up to 7.6 million pounds of thrust, and it is clear the tower. This is the control view. We appear to have a good first stage at this point. The dynamics officer says the trajectory looks good. We show a one-half mile in altitude at this time. Roll complete, and we're pitching. Roger that. Stand by for mode one. Bravo. Gene Krantz monitors all aspects of the launch from his desk at Mission Control in Houston. The flight director's job description is very simple. It's only one sentence long. It says to take any actions needed for crew safety and mission success. Crew safety is number one, mission success is number two. More than halfway to the moon, the crew broadcasts live from the spaceship. Okay, uh, a couple of square packages I now have my hand on here. Our, our emergency uh, oxygen supply. The astronauts don't know the networks aren't carrying their broadcast. Missions to the moon are becoming routine. And not just for the public. The controllers said they're bored to death because really it was, you know, everything was going right down the flight plan uh, perfectly. The uh, shift rotations at mission control had uh, come off very smoothly. Everything was on track. Just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back to a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night. As the crew prepares for seven hours of sleep, mission control makes one last routine request. 13, we've got one more item for you when you get a chance. We'd like it to... Uh... Stir up your cryo tanks. This is where we turn on some fans in the oxygen tanks. 
to basically stir them up to make them uniform so we can 